Hey guys, I'm Hussein. So for the past few days, I've been using Superbase for a personal project and I would like to share you some features of this platform. So one of the coolest features I find is real-time programming. So what do I mean by real-time programming? Well, it's a practice that enables apps to update data without the user refreshing the page. So let's take Notion as an example. Notice that whenever I type in one window, the other windows contents update without me refreshing the in this video i'll show you how we can build real-time application using the using the super base platform we'll build an app that lets users save text on the text area since this is in real time the text area in the other window gets updated as soon as the other user clicks on the save button so for example if i update the value of this text area by value one if i save it reflect on the other side similarly if i update it here on the left and then i save it it could appear on the start with i hope you've already created a project on superbase superbase sorry if you haven't done so please do so now next create a table in your project or your database by going to the database section here create a new table and then i'll assign a name to my table so for example it should be note since i want to create a note in my database so it's going to be an id and then a title type string which is text and then enable real time so this helps creating real time application click on save next in your database settings go to publications and then make sure that real time is enabled on your database since we checked it before it should be checked here as well now let's configure some policies in your notes table add create an rls policy since rls is now enabled now let's create another policy now we need to make sure that anonymous access is enabled so to do so click on all move the check expression using true and then save policy so we need to create a name here one thing to make sure is that to never use this practice during production this causes security issues let's now head back to vs code as discussed before we'll be using react for the front end of this project let's create a project now npm create wait latest and then we have to we want to create a project in our real time that tutorial direct we'll be choosing react as TypeScript with plus SWC, and then we'll install everything that we need. Next, since we're using Superbase, I want to install Superbase modules for so npm install Superbase at Superbase Superbase. Yes, let's now navigate to a project and then we can code in your project in the source directory create a file called superbase config which will store our config for our superbase client then here we try to connect our day our superbase client with the react project first we need to get our api integration and get the url from the from this section Let's first wait for our API keys to form. Now that has been formed, copy. So we first import our client stuff. Client. Let's create client. And then our URL. And then our anonymous key. And of course now we have to export it cool to start with let's try subscribing to a real-time event first i have to import my client this client start with let's first try subscribing to a real-time event to do so let's first create an accessor to our table notes table from notes the end should be the cap end should be the capital that is the name of the table and then use effect 
create a base channel that will be the variable for our channel our channel database changes next on so my event which is postgres changes the event should be an update my table should be note my schema should be public and then i should get my payload which we and then we log it out to the console and in the end i have to subscribe to my to my event now in the end as a cleanup function i have to unsubscribe my event so database channel should be unsubscribed that's it now let's see if it works so in my web app here if i open developer tools and if i have an uh an entry in my table then if i add something so for example item 10 and then i update it it should just come up here in the console so i have a new and an old object the old object it gives me the old items the old value of the items and then the new object gives me the new gives me the new value of the item it's now time to create a small text area that updates on every change in the database let's first create a state const text area value it should be undefined since our since our database has an id and a title i will create my schema like so id should be a number and my title should be a string next let's now assign some values to our hook so const new data and then we store the old the new payload and then we store it into our hook text area value new data id and the title and of course when the component first mounts on the browser we have to fetch it as well to, to do so so we have fetch data then we get from the table now i want to remove my condition here and remove the limit next if i have data i assign it to my text area value that's it then all that's left for us is to invoke this one now time for us to create our blank text area i'll first remove this code it's now time to create a blank text area so first i want to check if my text area value actually exists next i want to create my text area so the value should be the text area value and if it changes i change the hook i change the value of the hook i want to check if my text area is being rendered it is being rendered and as you can see the value of my item is being delivered here let's now create a button for this on click i think and then if it's been clicked we update the title of our table of our entry let's now test it if i add item 11 to my database and then i update it it should come up here in the database if i change it again for example item 30 29 if i update it reflect here in my database i should refresh it nice so as you can see our code works really well let's try seeing if real-time functionalities really work for example if i update item 40 and then update come up here item 43 date here nice so so far so good so other than databases you can even subscribe to broadcast as well let's create a simple broadcast for this video create a simple function called broadcast message next super page channel so we have a super page client our channel is very similar to our database subscription method so i'll call it test channel then we send broadcast the event should be let's call it shower event then we send in a payload now let's try binding this function to our button create a button have on clicked the broadcaster message cool so now we're broadcasting but how do we check if everything's working to do so go back to the real-time tab in your database project in your super base project then we join a channel 
so since we called it test channel we listen to channel next now let's go to our browser and then if i broadcast my message a couple of times it should uh, come up in the browser as you can see hello world up but if we can but we can even subscribe to events in the front end to do so it's very similar again to the back end method to the database method sorry so i call it broadcast channel superbase client dot channel and then since i had a test channel then i want to handle this event on a broadcast event on the shower event and if i have a payload i do a console.log of the payload and then I subscribe to it as a cleanup function I'll also unsubscribe from my event now let's see if it works now I'll open my console window broadcast message and then it should right as you can see our code works so that's it for today if you guys have any questions let me know till then bye, -bye.